Hi, I'm Pastor Swayze Jubels. Thank you for your interest in this worship video. At Emmanuel Church, we have learned that the more engaged God's people are in our services, the more they benefit from it. And so our times together usually include a number of opportunities to actively get involved in prayer, reflection, and sharing. We encourage you to not skip through these parts of the video, but to grab a pen and a notebook and to journal your thoughts, reflections, and prayers. Please note the links available in the description of this video. They will bring you to several pages on our website that might be of interest to you. For now, we trust that this video will be both of encouragement and challenge to you. May God bless you as you worship. Well, good day, everyone. Welcome to Emmanuel's Boxing Day worship service, a time of celebrating God's incredible goodness. Uh, you just come through Christmas. Uh, hopefully, you had a chance to get together with someone at least to celebrate this, our Savior's birth. But here today, we are continuing on that celebration. Um, from wherever you are at and whenever you're watching this, may this time be of encouragement as we take you on a journey of reviewing this past year a little bit, reflecting on what has taken place, some of the more difficult parts and, and some of the really good parts as well. May this be a time of encouragement to you. I really believe that the Lord has a message for us today in that will just really help us um, fear Him, be in a right relationship with Him. Anyway, let's begin that whole journey with going back to Christmas and singing the song, O Holy Night. O holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Oh, 
Father, that is our prayer, that as a church, as a community of faith, we proclaim your power, your glory, for you are good, your love endures forever. You've uh, shown us your love by sending your son, Jesus, to be born into a stable, to live a life, to be willing to walk that road to Golgotha, to give his life there, and then to rise from the dead, to ascend into heaven and to come from there at some point in the future. We thank you that we can face that day with confidence because you are good. Your great forgiveness, your great salvation through faith in Jesus. We thank you, we praise you. And Lord, as, as we spend this time together looking back on this past year and tuning into who you are and what it is that you have for us, Lord, Open the eyes of our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now before we uh, look back on this year, we just really want to sing this song, this creedal song that just really expresses what binds us together, this, uh, this great faith that we have. In the darkness we were waiting. <laughs> In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal King 
Well, church, as we come to the end of 2021, I'm going to read two verses from Lamentations that will lead us into a time of reflection. And during that time of reflection, I invite you to look back and to bring to mind the struggles that you faced this past year. We will respond to that time of reflection with a song called Warn. But for now, here are the two verses. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I will remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. What struggles did you face this past year?
Lamentations 9, verses 21 to 23. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We're going to take some more time to reflect, but this time we're going to look back on this past year and bring to mind those things that give us hope. We will respond to that reflection in song as well. God in good times for sure, but in bad times as well. Let's raise our voices as we sing this song together. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be Blessed be your name. We will continue to worship good in the good times and in the more difficult times. And we worship not only in song, 
We encourage you to continue to worship in generosity as well, with cheerfulness, for God loves a cheerful giver. Just to notice the end of the year draws near that the deadline for giving, if you want it included on the 2021 tax receipt, will be the end of the day of Wednesday, December the 29th. That will give our tellers and our treasurer time to wrap everything up neat and tidy before the end of the year. COVID protocol. Well, you've heard the rules coming down this past week. and just want to let you know that um, any group activities basically are shut down here at the church building. Uh, the only exception would be uh, the recording for worship. But the services are all online and online only. Uh, this really means, though, that we're going to be very much uh, intentional about looking after each other, the pastoral care part, right, where we bear each other's burdens. So, so please listen to that still small voice and, and respond to the names that God puts on your mind. Who could you give a call to? Who could you send a card? Who could you send a message? Let's be mindful of each other in this time of greater isolation. As for office hours this coming week, Kyla is off, so um, I'll be here from time to time. It'll be a bit more hit and miss, though, so if you really do need uh, immediate help with anything, just just give give me a call or, or send me a text message or something, and we'll, and we'll get in touch, or the elders are all available, and all that information is available on our website. But that brings us to the message for today. Well, earlier this week, as I was working on the message for this service, I got the strong sense that I was working on the wrong topic. I mean, there was nothing wrong with it. There was, it it's a fine topic that I was working on, but in the midst of this growing COVID crisis, I sensed a change was needed, and this Old Testament story came to mind. And so I printed it off, I read through it, I studied up on the study notes, and this message began to develop and become pretty clear. And it's a relevant message as we are faced with incredible challenges in our world today. Of rising COVID numbers, restrictions, uncertainty about the future, and certainly disappointing Christmas celebrations. Because this message is relevant because... It deals with how we respond to difficulties and where we look for relief. So here we go. I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey. Have you ever heard of the rod of Asclepius? The rod of Asclepius. Asclepius was the Greek god for healing. He was first mentioned in Homer's Iliad in the 8th century B.C., and by the 6th century B.C., it had grown into an all-out cult following. I'm not sure if you've seen the statue or picture of it, but here it is. You recognize parts of that statue, right? That rod with a serpent on it. It shows up in many of our medical logos and symbols as well. I believe it's right here on, on Soldiers Memorial Hospital. The new building is in front of it now, though. And EMS, of course, uses it for their logo. And the World Health Organization, well, it's right on their flag. But what I want you to understand is that this rod with a serpent doesn't actually originate with Greek mythology. Instead, we find its origins in this Old Testament story that came to mind earlier this week. And it's a story that does not play out in the 6th century BC or the 8th century, but scholars have dated it to approximately 1410 BC. So it predates it by many centuries. The people of Israel, God's people, found themselves in the desert. They had refused to enter the promised land as God had told them to do. They had failed to trust God, and so God told them they would spend 40 years wandering in the desert. Aaron, one of their leaders, had died, but not all was bad. A Canaan 
king had just attacked the Israelites. But by God's grace, they had been able to repel the attack and to defeat the enemy. But still, some habits die hard. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Here we go. Numbers 21, verse 4. They traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. God had showed his power time and time again. God, by his miraculous hand, had led the Israelites through the Red Sea on dry land. He had set them free from slavery in Egypt. He had provided for them, including manna, this, this food that just appeared for them to pick up and consume. But somehow... The Israelites had lost their way. At Mount Sinai, where God gave them the law, the Ten Commandments, they had this healthy fear of the Lord. Listen to how that worked out in Exodus chapter 20. When the people saw the thunder and the lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself, and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us, or we will die. The people had a healthy fear of the Lord. But now, after all that had happened, they seemed to have lost that fear of the Lord. And they spoke against God and against Moses, and they grumbled. This story continues on and shows us how bad of a thing it is to lose the fear of the Lord. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people and many Israelites died. To lose the fear of the Lord and its consequences, the speaking back against God, the grumbling is a bad thing. God is not to be mocked. And so God sent venomous snakes, and many people were bitten, and many people died. And the people recognized their folly, and in verse 7, the people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. And so Moses prayed for the people. Moses prays, and this is where we find the origin of the snake on a pole. The Lord said to Moses, make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. And so Moses made a bronze snake and put it on a pole. And then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at a bronze snake, they lived. After all that took place, and Sand and these snakes came, you were bitten. All you had to do is get close enough to this artifact that Moses made, this bronze snake, and look at it, and you would be healed. You would live. Now, by the way, side note, bronze can also be translated as copper. Archaeologists actually have found ancient copper mines in this region, and the copper would have been reddish, which, of course, made a beautiful symbol for redemption as well, right? That's an aside. For now, Moses makes the serpent, puts it in a pole, and that seems to have ended the crisis. But the whole serpent thing has a tail. I hope you're familiar with the layout of the Old Testament, the story of the Old Testament. The Israelites continue on in the wanderings of the desert, through the desert, eventually make it into the promised land where they are governed by the judges. Uh, then it becomes a kingdom, the United Kingdom, under first Saul and then King David and then his son Solomon, right? Then, then there's trouble and, and the, the kingdom divides. And there's the ten northern tribes, they're referred to as Israel most often. And then the two southern tribes are referred to as Judah, 
Well, it's in these two southern tribes that the serpent shows up again. This very same artifact. Hezekiah is king in Judah, and he is a good king. And in 2 Kings chapter 18, we read, He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. He removed the high places, smashed the sacred stones, and cut down the Asherah poles. And then listen to this. He broke into pieces the bronze snake Moses had made. That same serpent shows up again. King Hezekiah, the good king, smashes to pieces this bronze snake Moses had made many years earlier. Now, why would he have done that? For up to that time, the Israelites had been burning incense to it. It was called Nehushtan. I... I've always admired King Hezekiah. But what's up with the people of God burning incense to this artifact? Can you believe they were worshiping a snake made by human hands? Did they not remember what happened in the desert earlier on with the golden calf? Had they totally forgotten about the fear of the Lord? Had they lost the fear of the Lord? I mean, I I get that they held on to this bronze snake. I mean, it would have been an absolute powerful reminder of this event that had taken place in the desert so much earlier, of their sin. It would have reminded them of the consequences of sin, of God's grace and His healing in providing a way out of that crisis. But instead of using that that serpent as a reminder of their sin, that it might just cause them to look to their God, they began to worship it. They even gave it a name. Ah, as people, we can be so fickle, can't we? One moment we're sincere about our worship of our almighty God, the next moment we're bowing down to a object made by human hands. Unreal. Unreal. The story of the snake still isn't quite done. It shows up again in the New Testament. Jesus actually mentions it. In his conversation with Nicodemus, He says, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Just as Moses, so Jesus. Just as Moses. This is a comparison, or in a sense, it's it's the, the Old Testament story becomes a picture of something that Jesus is doing. This is all found in John chapter 3. It's the two verses just before the world's most famous verse. The God so loved the world. These are the two verses right before that. John 3, 14 and 15. So let's let's just compare the two then. Just as Moses, the original story. uh, Just a quick overview. There was a lack of fear of the Lord, which led the people to speak out against God and against Moses and led him to grumble, which caused an infestation of venomous snakes, which caused death. That's what sin does, right? Death. It causes death. The re- to reverse the curse, Moses was told to, to, to make a serpent, to put it on a pole, and to raise it up so that the people could look at it and be healed. Well, that then becomes a picture of what Jesus is about to do, because Jesus came to undo the curse of death today, right? due still to a lack of fear of the Lord, due to our own sin. And Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up that snake, so the Son of Man, Jesus himself, must be lifted up, of course, referring to his crucifixion. That we can look at him, that we can believe in him, trust in him being lifted up, find life and healing in him. 
that we might be healed to eternal life. Now, why do I think this is such a relevant story that we needed to talk about in these times of incredible challenge? Well, this is why, and it may be a little tough to take, but it's not just the world at large that lacks a fear of the Lord that causes death. We find it in the church as well. We find it among Christians. We lack a fear of the Lord a lot of times. We instead focus on God is love, and he's my friend, and he's forgiving, and he's full of mercy, and he's slow to anger, and he's compassionate, and and all of that is true, my friends. Hear me loud and clear. All of that is true, but he is also God Almighty. When the Israelites at Mount Sinai saw the smoke and heard the trumpet, they stayed back. And they told Moses, you go, you go deal with God. You tell us what to do. We'll do it because if, if God speaks to us, we're dead. We'll die. And then there was Isaiah, the prophet, of course. And he had a vision of the throne room. He had a vision of God's glory. And it struck the fear right in him. He says, woe is me for I'm ruined. For I'm a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Woe to me. Isaiah had a healthy fear of the Lord. Or you can uh, can ask Ananias and Sapphira from the New Testament. Of course you can't because they were struck dead. For they too lacked the fear of the Lord. And because of it, they tested the Holy Spirit by lying to the Holy Spirit. Lack of fear of the Lord is a serious thing. And I really don't believe we have enough respect for God's glory in the church today. It has all kinds of effects, very negative effects. But to stick close to the original story, when we lack a fear of the Lord today, we find ourselves grumbling and grumbling and grumbling. This past week, New restrictions were imposed, and and you could feel it well up, right? There were some moments there where the grumbling was right there. The discontent. And I understand that. But would that grumbling come as easy if we had a healthier fear of the Lord? I mean, if we had a greater sense of God's glory in the midst of it all, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't a greater sense of God's glory lead to far greater humility in our life and far greater dependence and far greater thankfulness and gratitude towards everything that he has given us? Wouldn't, it, wouldn't a, a greater fear of the Lord keep grumbling more in check? Or, or let's put it this way. What do you fear more, God or COVID? And how does that show up in your life? Or or, let's, let's consider it this way. Where do you look for healing? For a way out of all this? You, you know me, right? If you, have, if you followed services at Emmanuel Churches last year, you know full well that I am deeply grateful for our medical system and medicine and vaccines. It seems as a gift from above. Uh, the, I'm becoming eligible for my booster this week. I'll, I'll try my, my very best to get in queue. And, and to, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I see it as a gift from God, this whole medical system. But where do I look for a way out of all this, ultimately? Do I look to Jesus, the one who was lifted up for us? And and, and if I had a greater fear of the Lord, wouldn't I look more to Jesus for a way out of this? To ensure that I've been cleansed and healed from my sin. 
Wouldn't a greater fear of the Lord keep me clear, clearer from sin? And wouldn't that even have a very positive effect on my physical health? That whole fear of the Lord. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't, this, wouldn't a greater fear of the Lord at least put the whole COVID crisis in, a, in, in more perspective and show us that our God is greater, that all is well? Church, as we wrap up 2021 and go into the uncertainty of 2022, I encourage you to consider your fear of the Lord. Consider God's glory. Consider who you are in light of His glory. How unworthy, yet how loved. Let's finish this year praising God, for the truth that Jesus was lifted up on that cross so that we might have life, so that we might be healed, not just from physical diseases, but might be healed into eternal life through faith in what he did on that cross and in his resurrection. Consider your fear of the Lord for he's most certainly worthy of it. Heavenly Father, Holy God, as this year draws to a close, we humbly come before you as we consider who you are, as we consider your glory, as we consider your majesty, your greatness, your power. And in light of your glory, Lord, we consider how unworthy and fragile we are. And yet, as holy God, the majestic creator, you saw it fit to send your son, Jesus, whose birth we just celebrated, but who grew up to be lifted up on a pole, on a cross. that we might look to him, that we might believe in him, that we might have life, not death. We praise you. We love you. We are in awe of you. We fear you. And in humility, then, we come before you. We pray for our church family as we leave this year of turmoil behind and enter into a new year, Lord, that we would keep our eyes on you, that we would never lose sight of you, that we would never lose a healthy fear of you. Lord, fill us with your spirit. We surrender our lives. Be not only our Savior, but our Lord. Father, as we enter this year, we too continue to pray for governing authorities over us. We're placed there by you. Would you grant them wisdom? Would you grant them insight? Lord, that they may lead well. Lord, we pray for those areas in the world where, in addition to this COVID crisis, they face so many other crises of turmoil and tensions between nations, natural disasters. Lord, we think of loved ones who are isolated at this time. Lord, would you bring their names to mind in the days ahead that we might respond to them and encourage them and to be your hands and feet to them. Lord, in all of it, as we fear you, as we humble ourselves before you, we look to you. 
And we trust that you will carry us through. For you are our good shepherd. To that end, we gladly follow you. And trust that you will show us the way how to do that in the new year. Lord, receive our praise and our commitment then to you. In Jesus' name, amen. In the darkness, God will keep me. He will stay and never sleep. In the darkness, God is brighter. Though the night is long and deep. Oh, this day your hand has held me. God of heaven by my side. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. You will hold me through the night. In the shadows you are with me, and you know my every fear. In the shadows none can harm me, for the mighty King is here. All this day your hand has helped me, God of heaven by my side. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. You will hold me through the night. So I find my rest in Jesus, he who came to rescue me. Jesus, save me from the darkness. I will rise to life with him. All oh, this day your hand has helped me. God of heaven by my side. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. You will hold me through the night. You will hold me through the night. With that confidence, we close this service. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.